Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It is Thursday, the 18th day of March. Today is, well, it's uh, National Awkward Moments Day. Uh, Did I make that moment kind of awkward? A little bit. I tried. Uh, National Biodiesel Day. National Lacy Oatmeal Cookie Day. Wait, wait, what? Lacy. That's a lot going on there. National Sloppy Joe Day, which reminds me of this blockbuster amazing movie that Heidi made me watch, Inhuman Witch. Inhuman Witch. Oh, my goodness. It was funny. It was ridiculous. It's about it was a guy supposed to be. named Joe. He gets turned into a sloppy Joe. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's based on a true story. <laughs> I'm not sure, but might be directed by Martin Scorsese. It was awesome. Yeah, probably not. Um, National Supreme Sacrifices Day and National Farm Rescuer Day. All of these things happening on this Thursday. And it's a Thursday, so we have Dear Dear John John Letters. Letters. We got a good one to get to. It's coming up in a bit. Addiction. It's not a pretty thing. Addiction can lead to many problems in your life. Addiction can drive away those who love you the most. And addiction can lead to the loss of jobs, relationships, and even your life. Don't let addiction tear your life apart anymore. Get the help you need to defeat addiction and put the pieces back together in your life. Learn more at timeforrehab.com. They want to help. Timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Now, surveys and studies and such brought to you by bettercreditcards.com. A study by one poll found that one in three Americans would give anything to live in a Jetson-style home. Well, according to the cartoon, we were all supposed to be in one of those by the year 2020, which, by the way, for those of you keeping track, that was last year. So when they say Jetson style, they mean a home that does everything for you. Yeah, it's got like the walking uh, little walkways and, you know, Rosie cooks all your food. Yeah, I wouldn't. You wouldn't want one of those? No. I don't think so. I I like our home the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, I don't need that. Duke University study analyzed data from 22,000 online daters and found that women put a premium on income and height when deciding which men to contact. For example, the study showed a five foot nine inch man needs to make about thirty thousand dollars more than a five foot ten inch man just to be this exact same success. Really? Yeah. So that one inch, thirty thousand dollar difference. That in pay. is so, interesting. Yeah, I've never done the online date. I didn't know they ask you how much you make and how tall you are. I had no idea. Well, they ask you how tall you are. I've never see. I've never done any. Of that. I have no idea how any of that but works. I haven't seen anything in all of them that I've filled out recently. That what says, are you filling out, Tati? <laughs> <laughs> just, that asks how much she's I my make. wife and has been since before dating on the internet was a thing <laughs> thanks for listening to today's surveys and studies and such do you have a credit card we'd like to help you get a better credit card if you don't have any credit cards we'd like to help you too at bettercreditcards.com we have credit cards that offer different things for different people some cards offer points some cards are designed to help you build your credit bettercreditcards.com wants to help you get a better credit card no matter what you're you're looking for. See if we can help you find a better credit card at bettercreditcards.com. That's bettercreditcards.com. This is your Brain on Drugs brought to you by timeforrehab.com. Heidi, this is kind of an update of a story we read, I don't know, it was yesterday, a couple days ago, whenever. Um, uh, angered that her roommate was playing the song Le Freak over and over again, a Florida woman battered the disco devotee. 12 15 a.m. is when this happened, by the way, at their apartment. They're cousins, they share an apartment together. According to the arrest affidavit, 53-year-old Marianne Lannon became upset that 64-year-old, the victim, her cousin, put on this song, a 1978 disco song, put it on repeat and just kept playing it over and over and over and over. And that's when Lannon just freaked out. She came out and pushed her cousin into a makeshift tiki bar, causing the bar to fall into pieces. She got struck on the left eye with a speaker. It sounds like they had quite the party pad Kinda going does. on where they live. They're in their 60s? Yes, yeah, so 53 and 64. <laughs> yeah, quite the thing. Swinging wow. part, apartment hair. Disco, yeah. tiki bar. They're, they're in all kinds of trouble. She uh, <laughs> she was released on her own recognizance, ordered to stay away from her cousin, which is going to be tough because they live together. So I'm not sure how that works. But that is what happens when your brain is on disco. No, I'm sorry, on drugs. <laughs> Now, big screen, little screen, brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. Nicholas Cage just recently got married. 
I always liked him. Yeah. He's so, so his, interesting. This is his fifth wife. Woo. Rico is her name. She is 26. He is 57. They got married at the Wynn Hotel in Las Vegas last month. So I wish them the very best. I do too. Um, other thing, this isn't really a story. Uh, it's interesting though. Some celebrity middle names. And I saw this and I was like, I don't know where I'm going to put this. So how about right here? Ben Affleck. What's his middle name? Um, Gene. No, Giza. G-E-Z-A. Ben Giza really? Affleck. How about Elton John? What's his real middle name? I don't know. Hercules. Really? Yeah. How about Tina Fey? What do you think her middle name is? I have no idea. Stemat- Stematina. S-T-A-M-A-T-I-N-A. How would you even say that? I Stam- have no Stamatina? idea. Stematina? I don't know. And then Jennifer Lawrence. What do you think her middle name is? I don't know. Wrong. Schrader. S-H-R-A-D-E-R. <laughs> Jennifer Schrader Lawrence. There you go. A couple of fun Interesting middle names for celebrities. Part of Big Screen, Little Screen. Brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. At WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com, we help you get ready for all the fun holidays throughout the year with fun, silly, and just plain weird gift ideas for your friends. If you have a friend who has a bizarre sense of humor, we've got a gift for them. WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com posts a link to something that will make you smile each and every day. Whether you buy these weird gifts or not, it's worth checking out just for a smile. WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com That's WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com Now your scoop of the day comes your way, courtesy of RedCrossBlood.org. Cadbury eggs. Oh, I have one of those. You do, in your drawer. I I saw it the other day. You're lucky I didn't take it. You should. Um, Here, I'll give it to you. Honestly, Thank I'm not, you. I, I like them, um, but I just, they're a little too rich for me, honestly. So, which oh, is kind of weird I because I love, I love chocolate. I love, well, the reason I bring it up, uh, Cadbury is teaming up with Goose Island Brewery for a limited edition Cadbury cream stout. Ew. That does not sound good to me, but you know what? No. On the internet, there's a lot of people super excited to get it. Well, like, just oh, because they're excited this. to try it yeah. doesn't mean they're going to enjoy well, I it. I bet it will sell well because people are like, oh, I want to try that. Um, but then, you know, I don't know if it'll sell more than once. Mm-hmm. <laughs> an endangered species of American ferrets has been cloned from an animal that died 30 years ago. This is a bad idea. I think so, too. I can give you like four movies just off the top too, of my right head. I can, too. Right off the top of my head. It's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember Jurassic Park, exactly, Lost World, and Gosh. and the rest, I can't remember the rest of the names of them. But uh, yeah, this uh, this was just an American ferret, though. So at least it's not a T Rex or anything like that. But what but, if once they mess with its genes, it becomes this angry, uh, vicious attack of little the killer animal. ferrets? I think I watched a movie about yeah, that. You probably did. <laughs> she has been watching like the worst movies ever on, on purpose. Amazon Prime. Yeah, you just go in like search for worst movies ever. Is that what you do? No, if you like, if you search um, "Deary Off the Wall," which is a film that you oh, and yeah. I are in. Oh, yeah, we are in that. Yeah. Um, then it will say if you enjoyed this horrible movie, you <laughs> might also enjoy this horrible movie, and then yeah. you can just go nuts. If you are it's looking fantastic. for a horrible movie that we are in, uh, it is called "Deary Off the Wall," and it is horrible, and we are in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it seems people with children suffer from road rage more than people without children. I don't know why. According to a survey, 44% of parents admit that they've experienced road rage compared to just 33% of drivers with no kids. The survey also revealed that men are more likely to break traffic rules than women, which seems, you know, quite odd to me because Heidi's the one that's usually doing all the <laughs> really? <laughs> I was going to see how long it would take for you to just completely throw me under the bus. Mm-hmm. Did you know that National uh, Hot Dog, I'm sorry, National Dog Lovers Month is this month, March? I did National not. Dog Lovers Month. Survey finds 14% of dog owners have a social media account for their dog. 14%. Wow. If dog owners had to choose between keeping their dog and keeping their smartphone, 55% said bye bye smartphone. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So there you go. People love I agree with love, that. Love I don't have a social media account for my dog, but no, I would definitely either. not get rid of a. Because the dog is a member of the family. I'm not going to get rid of a member of my family for a phone. Yeah, I hear you there. National Dog Lovers Month. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Early to bed, early to rise makes you healthy, wealthy, and wise.
This is a great quote from Benjamin Franklin. At insurancechicken.com, we know a thing or two about great quotes. We help people get great insurance quotes every day. It's super simple and free to find out if we can make you healthy, wealthy, and wise. Okay, I can't guarantee that. But I can assure you we'd love to help at insurancechicken.com. We want to help you pack out great deals on insurance. That's insurancechicken.com. It's time right now for Dear John Letters. And our Dear John Letter this week comes, oh, I guess I always say the name at the end, don't I? So, well, we never say the name. We keep it anonymous. But uh, we'll start up at the top. Dear John. Oh, hey, that's my name. (laughs) The company I work for had our Christmas party quite a bit later than normal due to COVID. It was still pretty scaled down, but everyone had fun. One of my coworkers had a little bit too much to drink, so I gave him a ride home. On the way, he told me how much he likes me. He invited me in, but I declined. I didn't want things to be weird at work. When, we, when he went inside, he even told me he loves me. It's been a few weeks since that late holiday party, and he's never mentioned anything about it at all. I said something one day to see how he would respond, and it seems as though he had no idea what I was talking about. I'm so glad I didn't go in with him. That would have been a disaster. I like him. He told me he likes me too, but he was drunk when he told me that. Should I try to pursue something here, or should I just stay away? My mom is concerned that he may have a drinking problem, but that is the only time I've ever seen him act that way. What do you think? Should I ask him out, or should I avoid it? Sign to ask out or not to ask out. Hmm. So I can see where your mother would say that because, you know, if you were talking to uh, our, our daughter, our son, and like, oh, yeah, this guy he was so drunk, I had to give him a ride home. Or if you were talking to Taylor, you know, about that, you'd probably go, uh, yeah, that's exactly what you need in your life there, kiddo. I would probably say, bring him over. Let's have a party. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> On second thought, that is probably what I would say. <laughs> it sounds like what's, fun. What's the boy drink? <laughs> So, I'll make uh, sure to have it on hand. <laughs> now, one of the things I would say is uh, she's saying, should I ask him out? I guess I will yield to you first. What do you think, Heidi? Should she ask well, him out? Well, okay. I guess we need a little more information. Was it said, hey, thanks for the ride. I love you. You know, when people are drunk. Yeah. That word gets thrown around for everybody, for the random stranger you met in the bathroom. I mean, it just kind of depends on what exactly was said. If you feel like he was very sincere and was being all definitely sentimental and, yeah. and sharing intimate details from saying, his heart. He told me. Then, yes. Then I think if you like him as well, then, yeah, you should pursue that. But she's saying on the way home, he was telling me how much he likes me. You know, so. But again, yeah, I don't know. When See, I'm drinking, you know. Oh, I know. When, I'm married when to I've her, had by a the few way. drinks, it's like I just think you're so great. You're yeah. just so funny. You're so handsome. You're so. I get that way. That, yeah, and that's the only time she ever says that. By the way, so <laughs> you know what that means, right? I am not funny. I'm not handsome. <laughs> She doesn't even like me. <laughs> and then the next day I sober up and it's back and it's to like, this. like, ooh, you again? <laughs> Woof. Um, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, you know what? I think you should. Because uh, apparently there's a, a little bit of something there or he wouldn't have asked you in and all of those things. So if it were me, I would be smart about it and don't rush into anything. Because like you said in the beginning of the letter here, you didn't go in because <clears throat> I didn't want things to be weird at work. Right. You know how weird and things are going to be? And if you bring it up and it's not yeah. really the way he feels, but then I'm things just saying, are going to be weird I don't think work. it needs to be, hey, do you want to get married? But one of the things you could do is, I don't know if you have lunch at the same time, but if you want to say, hey, you want to catch lunch together tomorrow? You know, something like that. Ease into it and then just see, because you know what? When you guys are at work, that's one thing. When you're together away from work, he might be a whole different dude. Like you said, this uh, Christmas party when he was, you know, uh, relaxed a little bit and was drinking, he was a whole different dude from the sounds of it. So if it were me, I would not rush right into something. I would start out with uh, either, hey, you want to get together for maybe if it's to watch a movie after work or if you want to, you know, go have dinner somewhere or whatever. Um, I would start out with something super simple, uh, make it easy for him to say yes. And then when you spend time together. Kind of let nature take over. If if it's meant to be, it'll be. If not, if you're forcing it, it's not the right thing. Just not the right thing. Sure. What, what do you think? Sure. 
You're rolling your eyes at me. I am not. You just rolled them again. <laughs> <laughs> they can hear it on the radio now. All right. You can chime in with your advice. I'm sure it's better than mine, according to Heidi. And uh, I definitely think it's better than hers. <laughs> what was yours again? <laughs> Find out what he drinks. and uh, I don't know what it was. Uh, you can chime in at Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Addiction. It's not a pretty thing. Addiction can lead to many problems in your life. Addiction can drive away those who love you the most. And addiction can lead to the loss of jobs, relationships, and even your life. Don't let addiction tear your life apart anymore. Get the help you need to defeat addiction and put the pieces back together in your life. Learn more at timeforrehab.com. They want to help. Timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Around the world, the average amount of time a person spends traveling each day is how much? How much do you think we spend traveling each day? I will say an hour. Yeah, 1.1 hours. You know how I knew this. Oh, did you hear me say this already? (laughs) Yeah, I was on the phone a little bit ago talking to a friend of mine, and I asked him that. And uh, Heidi, you cheater. I'm I'm actually thinking we've read this, but maybe we didn't. No, I I read this to Eric when I was on the phone with him. Oh, okay. So you were sitting right there. That's right. You're right. I have to start not saying any of the top (laughs) secret stuff when you're around. Anyway, 1.1 hours. That's how much the average human travels each day. Now you know. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Do you have a credit card? We'd like to help you get a better credit card. If you don't have any credit cards, we'd like to help you too. At BetterCreditCards.com, we have credit cards that offer different things for different people. Some cards offer points. Some cards are designed to help you build your credit. BetterCreditCards.com wants to help you get a better credit card, no matter what you're looking for. See if we can help you find a better credit card at BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Time now for a news headline from somewhere in this world, Dateline Switzerland. This amazes me. I didn't realize this was even a thing, but Switzerland has approved a ban on face coverings in public. So they're going, they're saying no face coverings. Now, I can see where they're saying you must wear face coverings in public, but this is one we're saying you can't. So does that just seem odd to you where other places are going, you have to wear a mask, and they're saying you cannot wear a mask in Switzerland. So mm-hmm. it just seems really radically different than every what everybody else is doing. So I guess we'll see. I think Switzerland has been doing it differently are from they? everybody else from the very beginning. I don't know. I've got a link to the story if you want to read all about it. It's in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. At WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com, we help you get ready for all the fun holidays throughout the year with fun, silly, and just plain weird gift ideas for your friends. If you have a friend who has a bizarre sense of humor, we've got a gift for them. WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com posts a link to something that will make you smile each and every day. Whether you buy these weird gifts or not, it's worth checking out just for a smile. WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com That's WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com Now some weird news brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com A woman refusing to wear a mask in a Florida motel told deputies who were arresting her to, quote, look her up, end quote. Because okay. she's battered an officer before and would do it again. Ooh, it's yeah, good, that's not going to end well for not you, a good plan. sweetheart. 51-year-old Nancy Simpson, St. Petersburg resident, arrested after refusing to wear a mask at a hotel where she was staying, a motel, Days Inn Motel. She was asked to leave, and she said, I'm not going to leave. Then the deputy showed up to remove her, and that's when she said, she squared up to an officer and said, hey, look me up. Yeah. She's like, what do you mean, look me up? I'll lock you up. So that's what happened. It's not going to end well yeah. for you, sweetie. Mm. Her yeah. jail record shows that she was uh, in an altercation in 2014. Re- uh, according to the arrest report, she was seen riding shotgun in a vehicle with a bottle of vodka at that time. Allegedly tried to bite and scratch and kick a trooper who detained her then. Uh, she got herself in trouble for a trespass. Because she wouldn't leave when they asked her to leave. So, okay. what a bizarre story. That is today's weird news. John and Heidi. Time now for your moment of dub, brought to you by redcrossblood.org. Times Square's famous naked cowboy was arrested in Florida for aggressive panhandling. I didn't know that was a thing. 50 year old Robert Burke busted Saturday during a Daytona Beach bike week where he was strumming his guitar in his usual getup, white, tidy-whitey underwear and a cowboy hat and boots, 
They call him uh, the Naked Cowboy. Right. He was doing a thing called Naked in Daytona. Uh, turns out he was taking photographs with bystanders who then placed money in his guitar center sound hole, like the hole in the guitar. Sure. But his actions violate a city ordinance prohibiting aggressive panhandling in Daytona Beach. The 51-year-old allegedly refused to follow an officer's order and pulled away. An officer then pushed him against a patrol car, causing the headstock of the guitar to break. He was charged with aggressive panhandling and resisting an officer without violence, released on $600 bond. I wonder if he had that much in the guitar or if he had to, you know, yeah. re- reach in his pocket of his tidy whities because he wasn't wearing pants, Heidi. That's interesting. Yeah. Naked cowboy. You should start for... doing some of that. Getting a little no. extra money for the household. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, nah, That's a big fat no. And I'm a big <laughs> fat guy, so that's going to be a big fat no. <laughs> Moment of Duh, brought to you by RedCrossBlood.org. By the way, they would pay me to put on a shirt. <laughs> early to bed, early to rise, makes you healthy, wealthy, and wise. This is a great quote from Benjamin Franklin. At insurancechicken.com, we know a thing or two about great quotes. We help people get great insurance quotes every day. It's super simple and free to find out if we can make you healthy, wealthy, and wise. Okay, I can't guarantee that, but I can assure you we'd love to help at insurancechicken.com. We want to help you pack out great deals on insurance. That's insurancechicken.com. Time now for Is It a Golf Course or Is It a Rehab Center? Brought to you by timeforrehab.com. I'm getting my golf clap hands ready for you, Heidi, because you're going to get it right. right. You got to get it. I mean, don't let me down. Now the, the heat is on. The pressure is okay. here. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Evergreen in Brooklyn, New York. Is it a golf course or is it a rehab center? It's a rehab center. And the answer is... Yay! It's a rehab center. How did you know? Have you been there? I've been there. <laughs> you have not. Nice facility. Great pancakes. <laughs> oh, no, she's not really. <laughs> that is how we play. Is it a golf course or is it a rehab center? Brought to you by timeforrehab.com. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news, and I think this is good news. Comes your way courtesy of BetterCreditCards.com. Take a listen to this headline. A woman starts a food pantry in her basement to help others during the pandemic. I love this. A woman in West Virginia made a big difference during the last year when she started a pandemic food pantry in her basement. Uh, Rhonda Lee started taking money out of her own paycheck to create a food pantry for those in need. She said some weeks it was $200, sometimes sometimes it was $100. But then she was laid off in June. She continued to grow the pantry with the money that she had saved. How great is that? Wow. She said she was striving to find ways to give back to the community. And it was a big deal to her because others helped her when she lost everything in 1995 when there was a flash flood. She says, I know what it's like to get up one day and have everything gone. Good for her. They helped me. I'm in a position. I'm going to help others. Good for her. That is so amazing. Lee says she helps anyone, no matter their circumstances. She even goes the extra mile and drops the boxes of food off herself. She says, we don't tell people no. We just say, how can we help? What do you need? Right. For these reasons, Lee has been nominated for a local hometown hero award and by her rightfully community. so. I think that is amazing. Again, that that uh, story is in the show notes for today. If you'd like to read the whole details and there's some video and everything in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. Also want to remind you, that's the same place you can go if you'd like to chime in on today's Dear John letter. And I love it when folks do that but because our answer, you know, not such a great thing sometimes, but your answer is always pretty awesome. <laughs> Again, you can chime in. Or submit your own Dear John letter for next week at facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show.